before, after. Hey guys, welcome back. In my garage, I have one side that is nicely lit. I have two of these hanging shop lights that have Bluetooth speakers on them. They're pretty awesome, I really like them. And then I replaced the standard dome style ceiling light with basically a giant flux capacitor, which puts out a decent amount of light, but only in basically the front half of my garage. As you can see, I'm already starting to get dark. It's darker over here compared to what that is. So today, I'm gonna install some more lights. So I got some more of these LED lights. This is how I was using it on my last project. Not very good. So they actually do have Bluetooth speakers in them. They're a little bit different from the other ones because they stopped making those. Uh, but these have one speaker versus two. I have three of these that I'm going to install. One here, one in the middle there, and then another one on that side over there. So let's get to it. These are from Honeywell, the standard you know, four foot LED shop lights uh, with the Bluetooth speaker on them. Bright white, 5,000 lumens. 5,000 Kelvin. They use 52 watts each, so that's not bad. All right, so this is basically how it's gonna be laid out. Uh, you can see there's gonna be the one in the middle, but then the other two are on the sides um, where they're positioned. They'll basically be in front of the garage door enough while it's open that it shouldn't get blocked. So that should be good. So to hang the lights from the ceiling, I'm using these Versa hooks. They come with anchors uh, that really give you a good amount of holding strength, up to 35 pounds if you're just in the drywall, and 95 pounds if you're getting into one of the ceiling joists. So these should work out pretty well. Um, I'm not planning on actually pulling on the light at all. I'm gonna get a switch for them to operate remotely. To get the first hook installed, I first found the total distance between the ceiling light and garage door motor. This will help set the location of the light. Then I found where the closest joists are to that and made some marks. If possible, screwing into the wood and not relying on anchors is always a better option. After choosing which one to use, I made sure it was centered and made my final mark. All right, so I was able to get the first point of the first light right about there on one of the joists. So that means I can drill into the wood and install the hooks into the wood. Now, in order to do that, according to the instructions, use a 3 drill bit. I got that right here. And after I get the first hook in, I'm gonna hang the light from the one side and use that to kind of swing across to the roof or to the ceiling over here to figure out exactly where I should hang it at that point. That way I don't have to deal with trying to measure it and the tape measure bending or anything like that. So let's do that. After pre-drilling the hole, I drove the hook in most of the way by hand, but to get the last turn on it, I used an adjustable wrench to give me some more leverage. In order to mount these lights to the ceiling, you take two of these hooks, like that, install them in each one of these holes, like that. You take one of the chains, and you hook it onto here. Now you sort of have this yeah, basically a triangle, if you will. Take one more hook, like that. Take a secondary chain, and you hang it to the ceiling at the end. So I did just that, but in reverse order. I hung the chain on the ceiling, connect the next chain to that, and then use the hooks to connect to the light. Now the light can hang all by itself and is supported by its own weight. So I attached the second chain to the light and swung it up to see what the right distance was. For the second hole on this first light, where I positioned it is not on the joist, so I do have to use one of these anchors. Uh, in order to do that, you use a 5 16th drill bit, which I have right here. So let's do that. Again, just pre-drill the appropriately sized hole, then grab the anchor, put it in as much by hand, and use a mallet to gently tap it in all the way. Screw in the hook, and voila! All right, so even with just that first one, it is already a huge difference in the amount of light on the back side of the garage. So as you can see, there it is hanging pretty quickly. I have the hooks pointed out so that the tension on the chains 
is pointing in so it should never fall out. Uh, the chains are a little bit different angles, at least it looks like it. I think that's partially because of the speaker hanging off on this side, uh, kind of skews the weight balance a little bit. So I tried moving the this side chain up by one link uh, to help even it out. Um, one more link and it was angled too far up. So this seems to be a good compromise. So let's move on to the next two. I started out by measuring how wide half the garage is. Dividing that by two will give me the distance to the wall the hooks should be mounted. I then plugged the light in and moved it around by hand to get an idea of how the light will fall and make sure the garage door won't block the light while it's open. Using my measurement from before, I pre-drilled the hole into one of the joists, screwed in the hook, and then hung the light. For the other hook, I remeasured the final gap between the first light's hooks and matched that spacing on this one. Then I checked and rechecked several times the gap between where the hook should be and the distance to the wall to make sure it was nice and straight. As expected, the end position was not on a joist, so I used the anchors. Once the hook was installed, I grabbed the chains and hung the other side of the light. Then I repeated the same process a third time for the last light on the other side of the garage. I used the same measurement as the second one, so it is symmetrical in the garage. Look at this place. Look at all this light. Amazing. It is daylight in here. That's crazy. Not bad for a couple hours of work. A couple more things to do is basically wire management. But that'll come another day very soon. Stuff's in the mail. Get back to you then. All right, I got the stuff in the mail. Time to open it. Splitter remote, channel concealer, extension hoses. What this will let me do is plug all three lights into here. It's got three outlets and it has a power switch. I can just click here or what I'm going to do is use the remote to turn it off and on. Installing this was easy. Just simply plug everything in and the remote works out of the box. Okay, so this is a cable raceway I got. It comes with 10 15.7 inch sections with a bunch of attachments and corner pieces and things like that. Uh, so let's do that. Got tape, corner pieces, two pieces. Great, I guess connecting pieces, other corner pieces, some mounting screws, installation guide, and the channels. This kit came with two options to mount, a bunch of tape, or these screws with drywall anchors. Uh, these anchors are just the very basic light duty ones, which is probably fine for this but these screws are probably too small to really do much of anything because uh, you know the idea is to split the anchor and have it spread out into the drywall and that's what really kind of gives it that grabbing and holding power. With these screws being that short, not sure it's going to accomplish all of that. So if you do get this kit, I would probably use different screws, a little bit longer screws. So these channel raceways the top cover here can either slide it on, so you can slide it on like that, or you can snap these on. It takes a little bit of force, but. And then you put these couplings on if you want to kind of put that between two pieces, like so. All you're doing. There's this little tab right here, and you just stick this in like that. Installing these is a fairly straightforward process. Use a straight edge to mark where you want these mounted, and follow the line when mounting all the channels. Add the tape to the bottom, peel, and stick. They ended up being lined up on a joist, so I decided to also drive in a screw per each section just in case the tape ever fails.
Then route the extension cable in the base and slide or press the cap on the channel. Then mount the next space along your line, making sure there is the right spacing between the two of the bases to put in a connector. Attach the connector to the first channel, feed the cable through the base of the second one, and finally install the cap on the second channel. Repeat this process down the line. The last section had to be trimmed a few inches, and that was quick work with the jigsaw. I used a 90 degree connector to turn the channel towards one of the chains and finalize where the extension cable ends up. Then just repeat the same process on the other side and you're good to go. All right, I'm done with the cable routing. Let's take a look at it. All right. This is fantastic. It is so much brighter in here. I am very happy with how this turned out with this switch to turn it off and on. It's great. So if I don't need all of them on, like all the lights in here, I don't need to have them all on. All right, so as you saw, it's very easy to install these lights on the ceiling. The way I routed it out with the switch to make it wireless on off is super easy. It's very convenient. And as you can see, it's very bright in here. So if you learned something from this video or enjoyed watching it, hit that like button, subscribe for what's coming next, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.